Hi, my name is Jane Nigel Quintig, and um, I'm passionate about helping people to take more control of their stuff. Um, and that's why I invented a product called Sugru. Um, I don't know if people already know what it is, or maybe you could see a show of hands if anyone knows what it is already. Okay, so it looks like maybe a third of the people in the room um, know what it is. Well, um, Sugru is a, a new self-setting rubber um, that's designed to help people repair, improve, adapt, and um, modify things. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, why I invented it. Um, the journey from bringing it from an idea that I had at art college to a product that um, tens of thousands of people around the world uh, use today, um, and also a bit about our vision for the future. Um, I studied product design, um, and I realized pretty quickly um, that I actually wasn't that interested in designing new stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff already around. Um, so what about that, the stuff that we already have? What's our relationship with it? Um, you know, what things do we really enjoy living with? Um, what things do we love? It's probably not something new. Um, so that's a starting point. Um, life is always changing, and we're always changing, and we're all really different. Um, but most design doesn't acknowledge this at all, um, but could it? Um, everyone, including architects, um, accept that buildings evolve all the time. Um, one of the first things we do when we buy a house is to knock a wall or build an extension or change the carpet. Um, we repair it, we improve it, and we make it ours. Um, it's completely normal. Um, and what we do is we take control over it and we make it work for us. Um, but we don't do that yet with our stuff. Um, most of us, anyway. Um, every product design process, to me, seems to um, sort of strive for perfection. Um, it's like, this is going to be the perfect phone. This is going to be the perfect shoe, the perfect surface, the perfect radius. The perfect click. Um, and I think as we live more and more online, and we get more and more used to being able to adapt things and personalize them um, and make them work for us, the things in our physical life, in the real world, kind of become frustratingly static. You know, if it doesn't work that well, well, sorry, you know, like it or lump it or get a new one. Um, but so what? Um, well, I think that um, all of this, I guess, aspiring to perfection that's in these products um, kind of means that the product is more in control than the user. Um, and about 10 years ago, I came across a design strategy that completely blew me away, and it still inspires me today. Um, what do you do if you need to house a huge number of people? Well, do you assume that they're all the same, they all have the same needs, and build a tower of boxes, finished, ready for them to move in? The UN had an idea to build what they call core units. So they provide foundation, connection to the water supply and sewage supply, um, so it's connected to the infrastructure. Um, and a lockable room. And after that, the people who are given these units then grow their houses according to their own needs and according to their own means. Now, it's not perfect, but it is much more efficient. It encourages community and it's infinitely diverse. Um, and could this, could this happen with products? Could we imagine that um, we could see products as, um, as there for us to improve when, when we get them? Or uh, if 
ready for us to evolve as our needs change? Could we imagine manufacturers shipping unfinished products for us to finish? Um, Mark Zuckerberg talks about the hacker way in relation to their creative process at Facebook. Um, and it's really awesome. But to me, the hacker way is how every farm works. I grew up on a farm and you know, that's just how it works. It, you repair everything that you have yourself. You adapt and build your tools as you need them and as your needs change. Um, and I wonder, this is just a picture, yeah, if a gate isn't big enough, you just extend it. That's just how it is and how it always it has been. And I wonder if we can bring some more of this into our urban lives. Um, I studied sculpture, and, um, and then I, I decided I wanted to do something a bit more useful and moved into product design. But I found the transition really difficult. Um, so I immersed myself in materials, just playful, um, experimental process with, with materials. Um, and um, one, one experiment gave me a, um, a material that I could mold by hand and that um, stuck to things and became rubbery. And I became a bit, um, I, something clicked and I became a bit obsessed with, with this material and finding what, it, what was its place in the world? What could it be useful for? Um, and I was really struggling. I spent weeks um, finding what could this be? What could it do? Um, and I made lots of things, um, including a bike that would bounce if you let it fall. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, out of a very random process, um, that happened. And um, all the while, I, when I had leftovers of this, I was, you know, struggling way to make things. So I was using little leftover bits in my kitchen. My sink plug was a little bit too small, and I, I made it better. Um, and I had an uncomfortable mug that I made so I could hold it better. Um, and a knife that I just couldn't get a good grip on. And I'm, I, I modified it, um, but without really noticing what I was doing. And one night when I was beating myself up, um, like all creative people do, um, I was beating myself up quite badly about not being able to find what this one thing that this material could do. Um, and my boyfriend James saw what I'd been doing in the kitchen and um, he was just like, he got really excited and he, he just said, well, what if it's not you that has to be the creative one? What if everyone else could be? What if, like what you're doing there in the kitchen, anyone could see their stuff as unfinished and modify it to make it work better? Um, so that was, I guess, what some people call a light bulb moment. But it was just a moment where like, the idea just like, took hold of me. And I just thought, wow. Um, and um, I got even more obsessed. Um, and I started filling notebooks with, um, well, what would people do with it? What could they do? And I filled up like loads of notebooks with thousands of drawings, imagining all these ways that things could change or um, evolve. Um, and um, a year later, when I left college, um, I was still um, just, I was even more excited and I was determined um, that this should become, needed to become um, something real. Um, so I spent the next five years um, working with scientists um, to develop the materials that Sugar is today um, that's industrially producible and um, has all the fantastic physical properties that it needs to have um, to, to work. Um, and um, so I, um, I, I teamed up with some people and we did manage to get some investment funding to, um, to get started, but a, a quite a small, small, small amount. And uh, when I spent the first £5,000 on three experiments, um, I realised that that wasn't going to go very far and it wasn't really going to work. Um, so um, I learned the basics of laboratory work and um, 
under, with the support of uh, two experienced chemists that I had advising me, I spent the next two years mixing little chewing gums like this until we had a chemistry that, that, that worked so that, um, that you could mold by hand that would stick to all these different kinds of materials potentially as, as, as it would develop and, um, and that would cure and become rubbery so that it could have this really nice tactile feel. Um, all the way along and um, back at that point, we never really felt that we would be able to sell this or market it. Um, we thought that we would develop the technology and then that we'd partner up with a big glue company who'd be able to make it big. Um, and we did make friends with most of the important glue companies um, who were quite inspired by it, um, by the idea, and, um, and they really helped us along. But um, after a few years of meetings and so on, um, it, uh, it wasn't happening. The partnership that we hoped for wasn't happening. And uh, it was four years after I'd set up the company and we had a, a sort of functional product now. Um, and, um, but we'd run out of money. Um, so after four years of putting in all of this work, um, we'd hit the recession and um, it was very difficult to raise any more money. So Christmas 2008 was a really hard time. That's me looking very sad. Um, having put in four years of work and all this dream and everything, um, it really, you know, we didn't know if we ha had a future really. Um, so that was, that was a, a low point. Um, but I came back after Christmas and a friend said this to me. Start small and make it good. And that was a turning point for me. Um, so we were able to raise just enough money to say, OK, we are going to do this ourselves. Um, we were able to raise just enough money to, um, uh, to design our packaging, to design a website. Um, we bought a small mixing machine. Um, that other people would use for laboratory work, but we used it to make our, our first production runs. Um, and we built a package, we engineered a packaging machine with um, an engineer friend of ours. Um, we built a brand um, that it's not designed, it wasn't designed to fit in a segment or it wasn't designed to work at retail. It was designed to capture the enthusiasm and the spirit of people like us that are just frustrated with crappy stuff not working that well and um, breaking and you know being forced into this cycle where you have to buy new stuff all the time. Um, and we pulled in all our, our friends and family to help us make these first production run of packs, which was uh, a thousand packs, and um, we worked day and night to make it happen. And guess what? It worked. Um, this is me on the day of our launch, um, on the floor in shock. Um, we, on the day that our, our, uh, of our launch, we got a 10 out of 10 review on the um, gadget blog on the Daily Telegraph, and it flew around the web. And we sold our first 1,000 packs in six hours. So from nobody knowing about us for years in the back room, um, suddenly we had a, people who you know, really rooted for us and, and, um, and, and loved what we were doing. Um, at that stage, investors started coming to us. Um, and over the next six months, we were able to build our own small factory um, in East London. Um, in the last two years, our community has grown from those first thousand to around 100,000 today in 100, 110 countries. And um, we've grown our team from two people then to 18 today, and we're still hiring and growing fast. Our sales so far this year are up three times on the same period last year, so we're really going in the right direction. Um, and um, people are using Sugru as I hoped. There's a lot of repairing going on, 
Um, and it turns out Sugru is great for repairing computers and IT equipment where there's actually not any good solutions um, at the moment. Um, people are using it creatively. This is a project um, which we really love. It was a dad who um, felt his three-year-old deserved a proper camera. Um, you know, people think three-year-olds don't notice the resolution of photos. Well, they, they do. Um, so he adapted um, this camera so that it was drop-proof and that his, his three-year-old could, could take good pictures. Um, sometimes repairs are important um, and people are doing some meaningful stuff with Sugru, which is um, fantastic. So we had this email from a dad um, in Virginia, I think, um, who used to have, there was a brittle part on, um, his son is bedridden and needs to be fed through tubes and uh, the, there was a little brittle part that used to break and he used to have to make a trip to a four hour round trip or something every two weeks to replace this part. And when he wrote us the email, he hadn't made that trip in six months. So it's pretty rewarding seeing what people do. Um, people who use Sugru champion it. And all of, our, um, all of our growth has come from word of mouth. Um, and um, so I guess if, if, our, if our goal is to um, create a movement of repairing or help as many people as possible to repair and improve and adapt their stuff, well, you know, okay, so people are out there using it, but how are we doing with that? You know, that's a pretty big thing to say, you know, how's it going? Um, well, Sugar is still really super small compared to what we think it will be. Our ambition for Sugar is to make it um, one of the most opinionated and meaningful household brands in the world. And we do want to create a movement of repair and improvement and making. Um, so how will we do that? Um, well, um, first of all, from the last two years, we now know who, I, I guess when we launched, we hoped that people would find it useful, but we didn't know yet who and for what. Um, but now we know um, the people who use it and the people who find it really useful. Um, so we'll, we'll start with those groups and, and really grow those out. Because even within these groups, there are some people who repair and lots of people who don't, most people don't. Um, so one of the groups is outdoor enthusiasts. Um, that's what they use Suguru um, for so many things. But for example, here it's like repairing, repairing um, sunglasses or adapting sunglasses and repairing um, boots and so on. Um, people who build electronics projects um, find Suguru really useful. So for mounting and, um, and uh, placing components and insulating things. Um, home improvers, so for gadgets and appliances, there's actually, Zuguru is one of the best ways of being able to um, repair household items like that, especially hard plastics. Um, and skateboarders is another, it's a little one, but it's just to kind of, ex um, I guess, explain the different kind of verticals and groups um, who, who use it. Um, and so, I guess that's about knowing who to focus on. Um, the second thing is um, we need to be where people are looking for a solution and we need to be where people are looking for inspiration. So often when people have a problem, like something breaks, whatever, they look for a solution at retail. Um, and that's, so we, we need to be there. So we're designing a packaging system which can work across an infinite number of vertical retailers. So like all of these groups, um, we're, our packaging system will need to work equally well in an outdoor store, electrical store, a home store, whatever like that. Um, it's quite an innovative approach, um, but it's, uh, it's exciting. And um, second of all, people look for inspiration um, to the web and to media. We're pretty good at um, content and, um, and, and social media and so on, but we think there's huge potential to expand in that. And we're particularly interested in where the web is crossing with TV and, and stuff. Um, and then lastly, um, I guess 
Um, how will we get people repairing and improving? Well, um, although I'm probably most excited about um, where people start adapting and customizing and improving things, we'll start with repair because basically everyone agrees that makes sense. Um, no one's going to argue with you that it's actually a good thing that people repair stuff. Um, and we have a bit of a cunning plan as well. Um, so when um, when so, so when somebody repairs something, um, some if if you repair it successfully, something kind of unlocks inside you. So imagine your like feet fall off your laptop and you replace it, um, and you've you know made it work well again and it, it, it works nicer. Um, well then, later on a thought might strike you. Well. What if I made the feet at the back just a little bit taller? Well, then it wouldn't get so hot. The battery wouldn't get so hot. Um, and wouldn't that be better? So they might do that. It's like a small modification. And once you've done a small modification, then you're really free to actually reimagine your stuff. You start to think when you have a problem, well, actually, could that be done better? So this is like a bike, my, a bike light that's um, got magnets attached to it so that you can just click it on and off. Um, and then once once you've reimagined your stuff, well then, it's not that much longer when to where manufacturers and designers then see that people have these tools and this way of seeing things, and then um, it's not such a big step for them to think about manufacturing unfinished stuff ready for the users to complete. Um, for their own needs. So um, that's it. So um, I guess my do is to ask you to imagine that world. <laughs>